the, the difficult conversation lab, there's actually a place you can go <laughs> um, where you can study difficult conversations, and you're going to read about it in these chapters. And it's a lab where you can volunteer to sign up for it. It's completely like regular humans that show up and say, okay, I want to be a participant in this. And the way it works is you are given a very charged topic of discussion, and you are paired with somebody who has the absolute opposite views that you do. And you have 20 minutes to come together and to write an agreement about this topic that you both agree to and sign. 20 minutes. And what he does is the, 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 the pairs are given either one of two different types of material before they meet. They're either given material which discusses a completely different polarizing issue. So it's not the issue you're going to talk about with your partner, a completely different polarizing issue. So if perhaps your issue with your partner is abortion, you might get something about climate change. And you're given two, they, there's two options as to what you read about climate change. You're either reading something that is very complex and has lots of gray area in it, or you are reading something that is completely one side or the other, black and white, pick it. And then you go in and have this conversation, this, this difficult conversation with this person on the other side of the spectrum from you. And what they have discovered again and again and again and again is that the people who were given the material that was complex before they went in actually are able to come to an agreement they're actually able to bring the understanding that complexity is part of this equation, and they're able to bring it into the next thing that they're talking about. Now, not everybody's able to come to an agreement, but more people are able to come to an agreement when they have had exposure to the complexity of the issue, of, 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 how, of how complex issues can be. Whereas those who were given the polarizing thing to, material to read beforehand, they do not ever come to agreement, ever. So this idea of standing on our soapbox and preaching our point of view and expecting the world to change does not work. And yet we do it again and again and again. Why won't they just listen? When what we really should be asking is, how am I being invited to listen? Yes, amen, <laughs> right? So what this graph shows is that they, so once the, they do their 20 minutes and they either sign their document or they don't, he has recorded their conversation and what's happening in the room with them during those 20 minutes. And then he plays it back for them and they're hooked up to all kinds of electrodes while it's played back to them. And the one on the left is the people who were very polarized and what you can see is that their emotions are just as polarized. They're just either up or down, or up or down, or up or down. And what you see on the right is the emotional experiences of those who are working with the idea of complexity. That they don't just feel one thing or another. They feel a whole range of emotions when they are in the midst of these complex discussions. So some things they agree with, some things make them sad, some things make them happy, some things make them angry, some, but there's a whole range of emotions that they're actually experiencing. So what this tells Adam Grant is that what stands in the way of rethinking isn't the expression of emotion, it's the restricted range of emotion.